Hello, chess family. It's me, National Master Jesse James. And today we're going over a very fun game I got to play by attacking the French in the Isolated Pawn or the Monte Carlo variation. We're going to be going over uh, very nice attacking ideas. And, well, I got two double X clams in it. So try to see if you can guess the moves that are the double X clams. Here we go. I started off with e4, e6, the French defense. d4, d5. And here we're going to go ahead and play the exchange. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And to give winning chances here, we're going to play it. Here we go. Pawn to c4. Now, playing pawn c4 can give white the isolated pawn. Do not fear the isolated pawn. Whenever you get the isolated pawn, it's going to give you winning chances. And I can say my opponent here was only 2275 only, but I played this against many very strong Grandmaster International Masters, like 24 to 2700 easily. And I will say the games um, are very, very good. If I do lose, it's not because of the opening, it's because my opponent uh, has outplayed me. So the uh, opening is giving you equal chances and gives you very good attacking chances. So, let's keep it going. Here, knight f6 gets played. Not one of the best moves, but definitely the most common move to get played. Knight c3, putting pressure on the d5 pawn. Here we go. Black played bishop to e7. Again, not too challenging here. Let's bring out our knights first. Knight to f3. Pawn to c6, a good solid move here. A lot of people will adopt this idea. They're going to go ahead and take on c4 and use the d5 as an outpost. Again, a very, very common idea that is played by many of the masters. Well, I like to play this move. I play bishop to d3. The idea here is I want them to take on c4. I mean, the rule is, is once you bring the bishop out, at least for black, once you bring the bishop out, then they take, so you have to move the same piece twice. That's okay with me. I don't think that tempo is actually that big a deal. It's a long chess game, and again, I get to my attacking position, and I like this bishop on the long diagonal. We're actually going to see here a very nice idea when the bishop is placed on this long diagonal, a very nice tactical trick I do against masters, and this is definitely a master... Uh, uh, a way to beat masters. It definitely tricks them. All right, black goes out in castles, and I play pawn h3. This move I have definitely added into my repertoire when I do play against this line. This bishop g4 can be very annoying to deal with, trading off the knight here and makes the d4 pawn particularly weak. And this bishop actually has a hard time finding a good square. A lot of times the bishop will just go to e6, which is just a defensive square. And so, well, yeah, I definitely uh, like this h3 move. Here, black, of course, goes ahead and takes on c4. Now my bishop has to move twice. Bishop takes on c4. And here, bishop to f5. Here, black was able to win the square. A very cunning idea by my opponent. That's okay. No need to cry over spilt milk. Let's keep going. Here, I went ahead and castled. And my opponent plays knight b to d7. As I said earlier, the idea here is, well, anytime you have the isolated pawn, it's the square in front of it that is the true weakness. Black's plan of knight... Uh, d7 is to play knight b6 and then play the knight to d5. And notice that he gets a free tempo by attacking the bishop. Again, that's okay with me. This e5 square is going to be very good for me later on. Let's just continue to, to develop. And here I don't play anything really crazy. Here I just played rook over to e1. I'm developing all my pieces nice and natural moves here. Bishop went to d6. Now here I will criticize them a little bit for this move, as this is going to help bring my bishop in later on to a nice pin. And this bishop is really nice here, especially if the knight goes to b6 and goes to d5. Here I went ahead and played bishop b3. I know this knight to b6 move is coming, so I, pre uh, I, I go ahead and prophylactically go ahead and move out the way for it. Here knight b6 gets played. As you can see, it gets a question mark because this just invites my move of bishop to g5, of course. Here I got a very nice pin against the queen. And uh, this is actually one of my main ideas is I'm going to try to uh, give double pawns to my opponent or at least put pressure on this knight. And here my pieces are all looking pretty good right now. Here my opponent got a little ambitious and played pawn to h6. Not a problem for me. I go ahead and play bishop h4, maintaining the pin. But here he got a little too excited and played pawn to g5 and uh well it's white to move what do you play here all right guys if you haven't already go ahead and give us that like and subscribe remember like is going to go and share this with more chess players all right so what do you play here believe it or not it is now time for our first double x clam of the game we go ahead and play knight takes on g5 and this is really cool you know a, a lot of people will make this sacrifice and maybe not know if it's good or not this time it is definitely 100 percent okay because there's not many defenders over here on the king side and i'm going to get some free temples because of this free bishop and again putting pressure on this knight well, if you don't take back, you're just losing. So pawn takes back. Bishop takes. Now you can definitely see that there's some pressure over here. One of my main threats is to play something like queen to f3, putting pressure on the bishop, but also this knight over here. And you can see that this bishop and knight, although looking decently placed, well, they're just a little bit misplaced. They're not in their 
best squares just yet. And here my opponent made a blunder move and played bishop e7. And, and this leads to a loss of a piece and my second double x climb of the game. What do you play? Well, here, let's go ahead and finish up. Remember, we still got pieces to develop. I got my queen to move because I haven't moved it yet. And also my rook over here. So I started off with queen f3. A very nice move here, attacking the bishop and also putting pressure on the knight. And here, my opponent, I don't. I guess there's nothing really good they could do in this situation. Um, a stronger move would have been something like bishop e6, which is also, um, I don't think, the best move. But, you know, it's uh, white's winning here regardless. He went ahead and played. Bishop to g6 here, and now it's white to move. And again, it's time for our second double x clam of the game. What do you play here? All right, hopefully you push pause and try to figure it out. Here we get to play the very beautiful rook takes on e7, removing the defender. At this point, these bishops are going to be monsters, and the game is going to end very, very fast here. Uh, I think this was a 97% accuracy game, so not too bad on my half. And here, well, again, there's nothing better to do. Queen takes on e7. Bishop takes on f6, and here I already have the lollipop checkmating ideas. I want to go queen f4, I want to go queen h6, and it's game over. I also have very nice ideas about, well, playing something like queen g3 and just taking on g6. This is what I was talking about before. This is a very nice masterful idea. The pawn is actually pinning, uh, is pinned to the king, so a lot of times queen takes on g6 can, be, can get played because of this whole pinning idea. We're actually going to see a move I missed with this exact idea that I could have got to a uh, quicker win. I won in, like I said, uh, in 24 moves, so still a nice little miniature over here, but still, um, yeah, I always like to try uh, to strive to do my best. So here the queen has to move. The queen went to d6 here, and this allows me to play a very nice move, like I said, that I missed. Here I could have played the move of knight to e4. Now I did look at this move, but I did not play it because I thought, well, after bishop takes on e4, if I take back, well then queen just takes on f6 and black is actually doing okay. Here I missed the in-between move. It's white to move, what do you play? Simple chess, you just go queen to g4 check. I, 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 and I, you know, the funny part is I knew about this tactic. You know, I'm threatening queen g7 checkmate, so it doesn't matter if the king moves anywhere. And I just missed that bishop g6, a tactic I already know. Queen to takes, queen takes on g6 is just check and mate. Ah, that's okay. Like I said, I got a very similar idea in the game. Here after queen d6, I played bishop to e5. Here the idea is to kick the queen, but also I'm trying to get that queen to f6. If the queen gets to f6, it's game over. These dark squares are too weak over here. So the queen went ran away over to e7 over here. And now I went ahead and played it. Knight to e4. Here I realized that they cannot uh, take on e4. And so, well, I was also getting ready for knight to f6 check. You know, fool me once, uh, shame on uh, you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Here, I definitely did not get fooled. Again, if you take on, F on uh, e4 here, now you get to play queen g4 check, and then you're going to checkmate either on g6 or on g7. So my opponent saw this and did not fall for it, unfortunately. But it is a very bad position. You can see knight f6 is just going to be winning. He went ahead and tried the only move he could think of, which was knight to d5. And this is very simple. What's white to move? What are you doing here? Simple chess, remove the defender. I want to go knight f6 check, but the knight is blocking. So simple chess, trade. Get rid of the defender. Bishop took on d5. Pawn takes. And now knight f6 check is just going to end the game here. There really is just no good move over here. Here he played king g7. And, well, there's many moves to win here. It's plus 8 in mostly all variations. Basically, you're just going to be winning the queen. Uh, here I chose the simplest one, which was just knight takes on d5 check. And, uh, yeah, black has nothing better, really, than just to play queen takes on e5, which, again, will just lead to a quick win. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed this. This was a very fun idea about how to attack the French. Open up the position. Don't keep it closed. They love it when you close the position. That's why I like to play this isolated pawn. They don't know how to play it. So take advantage and attack your opponent in the French using Monte Carlo. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video. <laughs>